you know, um, and I've been doing these, um, certain episodes have affected me in certain ways, uh, Legends in the beginning really gave me a sense of respect for the universe and for uh, Gardner Fox. Uh, uh, in in Tabula Rasa this season, um, uh, the hug uh, that Wonder Woman gave uh, John Stewart was affected me. And this one, um, A Better World Part 2, um, springs to my love of freedom and choice and the, the, the grandeur and the peril of democracy a republic choice in, in, in freedom. Um, I said in the last one how they couldn't just be about America, but the idea of America really, at least what America's supposed to be, runs through this. And they cap it off with... Uh, um, a bit where the Flash and Superman are talking about how he's was, you know, not just a picture perfect Boy Scout. And it's a scene that, pl it's something that plays on two levels. He walks by and sees the, the American flag lying on the ground. This flag, this little flagpole, like office flagpole. And he picks it up and it starts waving. Now, you could take that to mean, yeah, he's still really got that Boy Scout angle. But the, um, Penn and Teller have this trick. They do, uh, with the Constitution and the burning of the flag and the symbol, the, what, what the flag symbolizes. Uh, or, or the you know, the purity of what the the United States flag is supposed to stand for, and I really think that in that moment, that's what they're tapping into not not the ideology, not the patriotism, not the jingoism of America, um, but the beauty of what America is supposed to be. Often falling short, often falling short, but the the beauty of freedom and in choice and all that comes with that uh, is really in that last moment. Uh, I'm gonna get lost in any even. I really do like that they spend so much time with Batman on on this. Because Batman is that character who is the least interested in freedom. But let me just... Batman wants to protect. Batman wants to build a better world. Uh, even in this uh, episode, he's talking to the Flash, and Flash is being very reactionary uh, to uh, how this is all set up and, and this world and, and the way this Justice League is twisted, and Batman says they're not very far from us. Their version, and, you know, this alternate Batman and, and him are so damn close. And that's, it, it's not just because they're the same person, but they're so close in their individual eye, it's just that one twitch. I mean, the rest of them are further 
down the line, further into the crazy town. But Batman's just that inch. That's it. Uh, even with uh, Superman, once he took that inch, which is always the reason Superman never takes that inch, is once he does, he can't come back. At least in his mind, he could never come back. And what would that mean to the world? With Batman, they're not asking him to move his uh, move his moral compass too far. But it is far enough. It's that degree where they can have this discussion or in this fight in the middle of the Bat Cave about right and wrong and, you know, seizing power and even in even the question of uh, when he talks, uh, when alternate Batman talks about building a world where, you know, uh, some punk, you know, some no-name punk can't just, you know, mug people in a back alley and, and shoot them. And even even though, if, if you believe, and I do, that Batman is playing him at that moment, that does hit home with him. And that does, that hits home with them both. So when they have the scene later about, Oh, well, they're playing. They're following the laws, and they're stopping. The guy gets arrested for essentially being mad at bad service, uh, and he turn and he turn and Batman turns around on the other Batman and like, wouldn't mom and dad be proud of this world? It just, like I said, it's that twinge, and now you have that. You know, that's one. The one dial went one over, and now it's went one back. And it doesn't set up that this necessarily, I mean, they, they, this, our world, this DC animated universe, with the how they beat the villain and, you know, working with Luthor, Luthor ends up with a full pardon. Um, and then he... You know, he doesn't have to be on the run anymore, and he says he's interested in going into politics. Which is where you started in the first episode with a President Luther. And uh, so that shows this dangerous parallel. Here's, here's, you know, where that Superman crossed the line, and now he's allowed Lex back into the world... Uh, and he's going to go down that same avenue that caused so much chaos and destruction in the first and the death of apparently the death of the flash uh, their flash anyways so it's not all hope it is there is a trade off there is as beautiful and idealized as our thoughts of freedom and choice and individuality are there is an inherent danger there is that threat but what we lose when we take that away and what I think I really wish uh, people in charge when they subvert our freedoms or feed us a line of bunk underst understood better that the uh, the idea uh, you know this system that we're supposed to set up and be a part of in the free world it's worth that pain you know it's the old George, George Carlin bit um, we're always willing to trade away a little of our free for, uh, a little more of our freedom for the illusion of security. And that's really at the core of this. They think they've, you know, this alternate justice, the Justice Lords, think they've built a better world. They've just built a different world. It's not any more just or right. In fact, it, it stripped people of a lot of their their abilities to choose and they could say oh well the trains run on time the 
you know, there's less this, there's less that, but being alive, being a person in, in a, you know, in a group and in a world, it's bigger than that. And there are choices and there are danger. And the, the episode reflects that. And I really, I'm getting deep here. Um, I wish I had been this more on point for the last couple. Uh, so Superman has a really good thing because he has the back and forth with Luther and the back and forth with the, the other uh, Superman. Wonder Woman doesn't have as much. Uh, I mean, has a little bit where I think uh, he, she helps Batman up or Batman helps her up. I forget which one. Uh, but they had that little, but there's not a lot for Diana to do. They don't even really play up like a lot of alternate universes where, uh, Wonder Woman and Superman are a couple because they still have the alternate Lois Lane in this. Uh, so once again, Wonder Woman, I don't know why, is not gonna have that much to do. They have Hawk Girl hurt, uh, so they have that, you know, whole situation and Jon Stewart's with her and they, you know, He's very tender and loving in that in that rescue. And Martian Manhunter, he doesn't really have a lot to do, but he has this really weird, cool, dragon fighty thing, so that's kind of awesome. Uh, he gets to pretend to be Lex Luthor, so, you know, there's more for him, at least to, in terms of that, not in terms of character development, I would say. Uh, I did like in the first one, where Batman asks if he can read this alternate uh, Martian Manhunter's mind. And he says, you know, we don't do that. And Batman says, can't or won't. And he says, both. But kind of like, it's that's, that's something we don't do. You know, all the Martians don't do. Which is, uh, is, is interesting. And it explains how they could get the drop on them. Uh, so I like that in terms of the writing. But I like the through line with Wally. And once again, thankfully, I get to talk about Wally. Uh, that his death was part of the catal in this alternate universe was part of the catalyst that uh, ended with Luther uh, being President Luther being killed and everything that followed. And he's the one who gets Batman uh, out by speeding up his heart, so it looks like it flatlines. And he has a whole. I mean, Wally's journey in this is. Really fun, and you get to see him take a lick at Superman, and, I mean, it doesn't last, but this is another really good Flash episode. I'm so glad. First season, you know, there's not much there to be Joyce of the Flash. A little bit here, a little bit there, but you know, there's a total package, not too much to be excited about for Wally. In this one, uh... In this second season, especially episodes uh, like this one, it really it adds dimension to Wally. It makes Wally more than just the comic relief. He's still the comic character, uh, but there's more to it, and I appreciate that. But, yeah, this is... I don't know if the entire story, I would say, works or is my favorite, but this this is probably the best uh, second episode I've, I've ever seen them do. Usually it's their second episode is the weaker one. This one, the second episode, is, is the better uh, of the two. Um, I don't know. I don't really, I'm really floored by how good this is. And I think more people should, should see this episode and, or, or at least understand its message and maybe we would have a better world.